what has for what was Pfizer got to hide? This is a question that we are all asking after we found out that the CEO of Pfizer, Albert Borla, pulled out. The interesting thing is a few weeks ago, the CEO of Moderna, you know, we were criticizing these pharma companies, you know, for being or for lacking transparency. But at least the CEO of Moderna had the courage, I would say, to come and answer questions. Yeah, he did not answer all the questions that we asked, but at least he was present here and were, was faced with all these questions that all of my colleagues asked. So obviously when we found out that the CEO of Pfizer decided not to come and answer questions, this, was, this is not an inquiry committee. So he was not bound by law to come and, you know, he was not on record, you know, he was not facing any criminal punishments in case he's lying in front of this committee. But even in that case, he refused to come and answer some concrete and specific questions. Questions that I think all of us and all of you have. And the first question is, what exactly in these contracts? What are they hiding exactly? I mean, in the previous press conferences, I, I showed you some of the pages you know, from these contracts. This is how they were disclosed to us and to the public and to the press. Obviously, after some of us and some of the brave journalists asked, what are the contracts signed between the European Commission and these pharmaceutical companies? So this is how they, this is how they disclose the contracts. Over 100 pages, every contract with Pfizer, with Moderna, tens of pages of those contracts were blacked out. So yesterday when we asked, I was the one asking, and some of my colleagues asked, when are they going to fully release these contracts? The representative of Pfizer, who was sent to replace the CEO of Pfizer, said that they can't fully disclose these contracts because they have some commercial secrets over there. And they have to protect their interests. Now I'm asking you, what about the interests of our people? What about the interests of the Europeans whose money was spent or wasted, I would say now, to buy these medical products that are not providing? what they were marketed for. Because what we found out yesterday, when one of my colleagues asked if they tested, in this case Pfizer, if Pfizer tested, if their medical product is stopping the spread of the virus, we were shocked to find out yesterday that they haven't tested their vaccine to see if it's stopping the spread of the virus. So we are now more than a year after the green certificate, the digital green certificate was imposed in the European Union and people were forced to be vaccinated with the medical product in order to exercise their basic fundamental rights. And they were told and we were told we were voted against the green certificate, but many of our colleagues voted in favor of it because they believe what these companies have said, that if you get vaccinated, you will not be infected, and you will not spread the virus. They even ran campaign and said, get vaccinated in order to keep your grandmother and your parents healthy. And we find out now, after more than a year, that when they requested the special marketing authorization, they haven't tested the vaccine to see if it's stopping the spread of the virus. So I'm asking again, and we are asking again, what are they going to hide? What do they hide exactly? Why aren't they transparent with their medical product? We heard yesterday, I mean, it was, I was shocked. Because Pfizer used this opportunity just to do a PR campaign and even lecture us, why are we asking this and not asking that? Who are they to question us? What kind of questions do we ask? We are elected by the people for the people, not they. And they are supposed to, ans to answer all these questions, which they have not. There's another issue right now raised all across Europe. The excess mortality rate in the month of July 2020. According to Eurostat, in the month of July, the excess mortality rate all across European Union went up 16% more than the average of 2016 and 2019. 
Now, if you look on the map here, this is released by the Eurostat. It's not from us. If you look on this map, you will see that the countries with the highest vaccination rate have right now the highest mortality rate. So obviously we ask, is there a connection between being vaccinated and having a higher mortality rate? Everybody's avoiding answering this, I would say, logical question. There's another issue. A year ago, I requested Emma to submit some details and data to me because I wanted to have an informed decision, I would say, when I voted in favor or against the Green Certificate. And one of the questions that I asked Emma is to send me the, all the trials, the tests, the clinical trials that all these medical companies had done, either in animals or in humans, before they requested the marketing authorization. So in the case of Pfizer, here's something interesting. When they submitted the information and the clinical trials to Pfizer, here's all the tests that they submitted along with their request. They submitted a clinical trial that started in January 14th, 2020. I asked yesterday the representative of Pfizer and she declined to answer. How is it possible that we, the world, found out in December of 2019 that there is a COVID or coronavirus as it's called in China, December of 2019. On January the 11th, the Chinese government released the DNA data or a segment of it to the public and three days later, Pfizer already started the tests for this vaccine. How is that possible? She did not answer. In the case of Moderna, and I've asked the CEO of Moderna two, three weeks ago when he was here, they submitted trials since 2017. So I'm restating the question, how is it possible that when we found out in the fall of the summer, December, you know, winter of 2019 about this virus, they submitted tests of their vaccines years before we found out about the virus. And I'm still asking that question now. How is that possible? So these are the legit questions that we all asked and that people are asking us. And unfortunately, they are declining to answer. So this was the, these were the, the main topics, I would say, that we tried to clarify yesterday. And unfortunately, the Pfizer representative, as Moderna representative, you know, declined to answer. We will keep pushing uh, to clarify these facts and nevertheless to make sure that the European Commission is going to fully release the content of these contracts. Thank you.